Hi, and welcome to the next episode in the Business Source Show. Today, um, as ever, I'm always excited to, to, to meet my guests. It always surprises me when people say, oh, I'm really excited today to meet this person. Well, were you not uh, to, to meet the other people? people? But uh, today I have uh, the great pleasure of, uh, of having a conversation with uh, an Amazon bestseller of not one, but two books, ladies and gentlemen. Um, sales expert, trainer, leadership guru, Neeraj Kapoor. Neeraj, welcome. Thanks for joining us today on Business Source. Not Lee, it's great to see you. I know last time we met in person, it was 2018. Uh, we met at an awards event and uh, I met you and your lovely wife at the time. And uh, yeah, it's good to see you again. Thank, thanks so much. Thanks. Yeah. Um, I vaguely remember that evening. Uh, definitely remember you, and uh, but but not many others. Uh, which, but uh, yeah, a great, great, great night. So today I wanted to um, chat with you um, as this thing is a chat rather than an interview. Um, uh, you have uh, a fantastic business in nurturing, guiding, sharing, mentoring, leading um, businesses and, and individuals. So kudos to you for that. Um, the everybody works in sales thing uh, is a really intriguing one for, for me because um, people working within an organization feel like they're not in sales when they're in tech or marketing. Uh, but in actual fact, they're all touching a client in, in some way or, or another. So how, how did that concept come about? What, what, what's uh, what's the, the methodology behind that? The idea came in the last big corporate job I had when uh, the marketing department were, were just really not understanding the concept of selling because marketing and sales marketing are two very different things. And I've worked with marketing people for a long time. They understand how to send out marketing emails, but they don't really get sales marketing. And I said mm -hmm. to the marketing team, you know, you're in sales. They went, no, 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 we're in marketing. I said, no, everybody works in sales. And that almost became an internal thing in the business <laughs> where everybody works in sales. And, you know, the CEO works in sales and the people in the marketing department work in sales and everybody works in sales. And it's very important people understand that because sales is the foundation of your business. And without mm. sales, you don't have a business. Uh, absolutely, because you can have the best product uh, and strategy, uh, but unless you're actually selling, it's, it's irrelevant. And if, you, and if you've got the right people on board that understand how to sell, you know, it, the, uh, the adage of, oh, it's gonna sell itself, I think, you're probably going to be naive unless you've got um, the new gold, <laughs> which uh, is unlikely, um, and these unicorns that everyone's chasing. I mean, that's the whole thing. Everyone's chasing the unicorn. It, it doesn't exist. Uh, it's very, very rare um, that, uh, that you're in a situation where the phone is ringing and people are calling to buy your stuff uh, without you having to do anything. You know, that, that's, that's not selling. That's order taking, right? It is. And even ourselves, we run our own business. And I'm fortunate enough, after the first 18 months of my business, despite all the expertise I had, it was really difficult. The phone was not ringing the first 18 months of my business. That shocked me. And I had to almost start prospecting again, which is kind of strange. You think I'm too old to prospect. I have too much experience and ego and pride get in the way. But now I prospect every day, without exception, one hour a day. That's when my business has gone from struggling to a business now that is successful, where I can pay the bills, where I can grow my business, where I've got another member of staff now. This has all happened because I understand the sales process. And more importantly, I do something most people don't do, which is I prospect every day, but I prospect properly as well. Yeah, interesting. Um, and I guess you're actually uh, practicing what you're preaching, right? Because you're advising and, and coaching people and mentoring people uh, how to become more more successful, and uh, there's a temptation to fall down the uh, builder working on his own house uh, syndrome way. You don't nurture your own business, so it's great um, great that you've uh, been able to instill that in in yourself and really uh, take your core values and make sure you live them uh, every day yourself. Uh, speaking to uh, the, you know, the the business. Uh, Obviously, the nature of what you do, yes, can be done virtually on uh, like like this. 
I, I'm imagining there was a big proportion that was face to face. So how's that been impacted for you um, over the last six months? It's had a massive impact. I lost about 90% of my business uh, in March 2020 when lockdown took place. And that was terrifying. I mean, when you lose 90% of your business within about 48 hours, it's scary no matter who you are. And I think the only advantage I had was I've been through two recessions before. That's how old I am. <laughs> so I've been through two recessions. So I, I knew how to prepare myself for it. Uh, and the second thing was I've been on enough Tony Robbins courses, business courses. As you can see from this uh, library back here, these books are not for show. These are books I study and learn and make notes from. So I, I put together a brand new plan. And my big corporate clients who I do LinkedIn training with and sales training with, most of them went on furlough and one of them lost his job. That was my corporate training gone overnight. I was speaking at three business events between April and June, gone overnight. So I'm like, okay, what do I do here? Because I have a mortgage to pay, I have businesses to pay, and my daughter's at university. So I put together a plan, very old fashioned, you know, get a notepad, pen and paper, and think, yeah. okay, what are the top 10 things I have to do right now? And one of them was, I got to finish off my second sales book, which I released from July to April. That was the smartest thing I did. Second thing was, I launched a podcast, because podcasts are growing so fast. You know, all these little things I just did, just a different way of sales training. It wasn't corporate, it wasn't speaking events, but podcasts, you're still training people. In a book, you're still training people. Speaking at webinars, you're still training people. It's just a different platform, that's all. Fantastic. So uh, pivoting the business, and obviously you, you, um, you recognize that early on. Um, Similar sort of scenario for for, for myself. Uh, to, to be honest with you, you know, uh, we we lost a few clients, uh, a few clients downsized. You know, it became financially very, you know painful. Uh, but we have to respect uh, their needs. You know, uh, you know their paramount uh, objective is to keep their business going. So survival uh, is really what it's been about. Um, there's you know, there's been a few businesses that have thrived. I mentioned this on a few other of, of these podcasts. You know, very fortunate. You know, if you sold kids' toys or anything entertainment-wise, uh, come sort of March, April, May, it was sold out everywhere. And oddly enough, golf driving range nets. I mean, I'm a I'm a golfer. Couldn't get one for like six to eight weeks. You know, they were just sold out. So clearly, some businesses really did thrive, but for the vast majority. It was survival. Um, so, you know, it's a really, really difficult time. Um, but I really like the uh, concept that you mentioned there about uh, using different channels. I think the marketing team would call it omni channel. Um, just share with us uh, a bit of your experience there with uh, and your thoughts around using various different channels to, to, to outreach, I think is the, 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 the term these days. It is. You know, one or two of the business owners I coach, one of them says, you know, I'm very successful. I'm the managing director of my own business. I think it's ridiculous. I got to email people and I don't get a response. And I said to him, okay, how else do you contact them? He went, uh, I emailed them. I said, no, no, no. Have you called them? He went, no, no, they don't want to be interrupted. I'm like, really? Okay. Have you used WhatsApp? He went, WhatsApp? Really? And all of a sudden I was just asking these questions and he was like bewildered. And then he started doing them, different channels, a LinkedIn invite, a LinkedIn voicemail, which is now working much, much better than normal voicemail, you know, using WhatsApp, using LinkedIn, you know, using the telephone, which probably now is more important than ever. And once you start combining multi-channel or omni-channel, as you might call it, you become much more successful in sales. And I'm sure you must have experienced the same thing yourself as well, Lee. Yes, uh, and I have a good friend of mine uh, actually did one of these with him, uh, John John Hayes, and he's he, you know he's very old school in in some of his thinking, but some of that's still relevant. You know, pick up the phone, talk to people. Mm -hmm. You know, I am getting pretty fed up with the amount of LinkedIn requests that I get for connection requests that have no message on there. Or they've used the default yeah. message that says, I'm looking to expand my network, would love to add you. Well, great. If you've missed a total trick there because you've taken the time to find my profile. I hope you've read it. I know most of them don't because they're not relevant to my business at all. But if you've taken the time to go to my profile, 
just make one sentence relevant to me or make that makes it look like you've read my profile and now I'm intrigued because you you know you you seem to me like someone that's taken the time to read me I will do the same you know I'll check your profile out properly and if I think there's synergy there then let's connect but just this carpet bomb of the connection requests that come out is just beyond me um but on the flip side i get almost no emails from recruiters these days it's all through all through linkedin um yeah the odd the odd phone call and in fact i just had one uh just before we came on air for for this podcast a lady called me asking if i was hiring for for the business and i said no uh, regrettably you know it's a tough time but thank you so much for calling best of luck keep going you know i'm sure i'm sure you'll find uh, find success out there um and she's like oh thank you and i appreciate that and so just that little bit of a boost back but you know the fact that she picked up the phone and called me was uh was great um switching tack slightly if, if i may uh from a personal development standpoint because i'm really interested to understand what does a coach make themselves uh different fresh new relevant how do you keep yourself uh, interesting to, to to your clients and prospects um and you know developing yourself because uh, again if you if you just stop learning you're just going to yeah. keep saying the same stuff right so how, how does that work for you well there's a number of things i do lee uh, first of all i keep a very close eye on my competition and I've actually invested a lot of money with my competition, which people are always surprised to hear, but it's really important to know how your competition sell. And most of my competition sell stuff that's five years old. They sell research on Google. <laughs> they sell data. I mean, it's just terrible. And whenever they train you, they put a little uh, dongle into a laptop and talk to you for eight hours. That is not sales training. And you mm -hmm. don't get results that way. So the first thing I do is I make my training, first of all, interactive. I ask questions, I get people involved, I do team exercises. That's how you get people learning. People don't learn looking at a laptop for eight hours and just nodding. Um, so that's the first thing. The second thing is because I run my own business, I cannot be too old fashioned. Yes, picking up the phone is still very important. It's one of the old fashioned things that works, but you have to be very modern with technology. You have to understand things like WhatsApp, LinkedIn voicemail, you have to understand certain techniques that are working. So for example, at the telephone, I don't prospect first thing in the morning because I know for a fact that people are having team meetings, they're often attending a webinar, then they have more team meetings, and by lunchtime people are pretty bored of technology. So I make my phone calls between two o'clock and three o'clock every single day without fail five days a week. And that's really, really important. Mm -hmm. And obviously days like today where it's nice and sunny, it's absolutely vital to make your calls before three o'clock because people want to go outside and it's nice and sunny as well. So these little things make a difference. Do the phone calls before the school run because a lot of decision makers I'm speaking to are still working at home and they're taking advantage of picking up their child from school and then taking the afternoon off and then working again in the evening. So two o'clock to three o'clock is a really good time to prospect every single day. Um, so know what your competition does is vital. Uh, pick up the phone and prospect but also, you know, clients judge me by results. People don't just say, can you give me training? When they do that, I will say, what results do you want from this? Do you want increased ROI? Do you want more confidence of salespeople? How much extra money do you want to earn? And I'm held accountable to that. And when I teach people something and they get results, that's how I know it's modern and that's how I know it's working. Fantastic. Yeah, uh, some some great takeaways there for for, for people. And I know you're uh, a, a big fan uh, and I've got a mindset um, and making sure that you are thinking in the right way. Uh, perhaps this is something you could expand on um, a, a little bit and, and something that I'll share uh, um, from my experience. Things like taking a responsible mindset versus the, the victim mindset. Um, it, and a good friend of ours, Gavin Ingham, you know, is also talking about you know, taking responsibility. Oh, yeah. I think that that's really got to be at the core of it, right, right now, Raj, because if we sit there blaming everybody else and everything that we've got is because everything we've got, you know, if we have a nice house, nice car, are we saying that is a result of 
other influencers? Is that uh, other people's doing? No, it, it's it's what we've done. It's the decisions we've made, and we've influenced uh, where we where we've got to. So if some things go wrong, why not just say, ah, oh, okay, didn't see that coming, uh, but what am I going to do about it? Uh, no point sitting there saying, oh, well, you know, my business is going down the toilet now. Do I just let it and and flush flush it whilst I'm there? No, I mean, we have a responsibility to our existing clients, uh, the prospects we're talking to, the partners that we work with to try our hardest to keep this thing going and uh, and support everybody. So um, fr from your side of things, you know, just share your mindset and how you know you've been thinking over this over this difficult period and how you coach people. Uh, so I'm, I'm sure they'll uh, find this really uh, useful. Thank you. Well, the most important thing you got to do, in addition to what you've said, which by the way, I 100% agree on, uh, you got to take responsibility. And I, I think people underestimate the importance of positive thinking. You know, if you're a negative salesperson, I'm not going to buy from you. <laughs> I'm just not. Um, so you really got to get your mindset right. And the first thing I encourage every single person I work with is to create a vision board. And a vision board is really important. And a vision board consists of two things. So one is a list of all your achievements because people are very bad at remembering a lot of the good things they did in life. So my mm -hmm. vision board will have things like, you know, awards I've won, but also I have personal stuff in there. So I have uh, tickets from rock concerts I've been to because I love my rock music or me playing the drums or, you know, my pictures of when my daughter was born. Those are big achievements in my life that I'm proud of. At the same time, going forward, I have images of my parents who I love dearly and try and spend as much time with. I have pictures of the charities I support. And the reason a vision board is important is two things. First of all, it's my future, but also it means that on days if I have four, maybe five rejections in a row, it's very easy to get disheartened and give up. We're human beings and it affects me. I've got 25 years experience in sales. Rejection affects me exactly the same way it's going to affect you as well. No, nobody likes being rejected. But when I get rejected, I get back on my feet again because I look at my vision board and my vision board is on my computer. It's on my phone. It's on my fridge and it's by my bed. So I see it about 50 times a day. So I know exactly where I'm going and how to get there. So that's the first thing I teach people is have a vision board and look at it and think about it every day. Uh, and the second thing, of course, Lee, which a lot of people are very bad at is turning off your phone. And I wow. see this is a big problem, especially with young salespeople. They are addicted I think every seven minutes because I, I work in offices a lot where I go in there and just say I'm training a company from half past nine to lunchtime, which is which is the most common kind of training I do is half day training. I'll get there about quarter to nine. And I spend just half an hour drinking a cup of coffee and observing people. And they get into their office, check emails, make a cup of tea, come back, check texts, look at Facebook. Then they start their job after being in the office for half an hour. And people are constantly distracted. And you do not get work done if you're looking at your phone every seven to 10 minutes. So you've got to turn your phone off. It is so important. And if the mobile is the only way of communication you have, then you've got to turn notifications off, turn WhatsApp off, turn off Facebook, absolutely fine you do this otherwise yeah. you're going to lose out massively yeah agreed you know you get sucked into the matrix don't you i guess you know um and at the end of the day not you know most well not most be a bad uh, bad term but i'm sure there are many people that work within organizations where the phone doesn't belong to the company and therefore people um that are going to ring you on that phone it's not business related yeah. And it's affecting your ability to perform at work. And when that becomes affected, there's only one route that's going to go. I mean, downwards. Um, and especially with the tough times right now, if you're not clearing yourself or you know clearing all that out and freeing your time and space up and your mind up to being the best you can be for your boss, then I think the the exit's more, more likely that way. Um, it is. That's a big mistake salespeople make. If you're a business owner, the mistake you make is working through lunch. And I keep saying to every business owner, stop working through lunch, please. Just go walk for half an hour anywhere. Or yeah. you know, if you go to the gym, fantastic. 
If you want to sit in peace and quiet, listen to classical music, fine. Going for a walk is the best thing or have lunch with a friend or a colleague or a mentor, but just don't stare at your computer screen over lunch. You need to have that break. So with young salespeople, it's addiction to technology. And with business owners, it's the fact they feel they have to work through lunch. You'll achieve much more by taking at least a half an hour to 40 minutes for lunch. I take one hour lunch every day without fail because I need the energy to work in the afternoon and evening. That's why. You know? it's, it, it's intense. You know, it's a different level of intensity. I'm not, I'm not saying that you know, people without the organization don't have intense roles and we've all got vital key roles to play within the organization. Uh, but there's a certain level when, when, you're, when you're the captain of the ship and everybody within that, uh, that boat is reliant upon you to make the right decisions, to put you in the right direction, um, to navigate uncharted waters, whatever you want to call it, all the different cliches, it, it, there's a huge amount of pressure. And you know when you've got meeting requests coming in, you're having to um, lead your staff on Zoom calls, uh, you're having to make uh, you know, tough calls on strategy on your product, uh, pivoting the business, looking at spreadsheets, doing finance calls. It's a heck of a lot to, to deal with, lots of plates spinning. Um, and sometimes you just aren't performing to your best abilities by continuing to work through solidly. I, I think I shared this with, on the call with Gavin. You know, I've got four screens here, a huge uh, vision uh, width here. And it gets very, very intense, and I can find myself sat here for many hours. And you know, I've started to take those breaks, as you say, and I come back, refresh, glass of water, um, go and stand in the garden, you know, and uh, just just try and quiet the mind down a bit and, and take myself away from these from these screens. Um, the other thing I found was, uh, and I'm really keen to get your view on this, uh, and I'm going to share my first book. Oh, Detox. fantastic. <laughs> Detox Life by Jane Scrivener. Um, especially with social media these days, there's so much negativity online uh, and it's across all platforms. Uh, and I, for one, can't abide it at all. And so anybody that sort of starts to get negative towards me or, or my loved ones, immediately disconnected, never to be connected again. Uh, there's just no need for it. Um, so there's the concept of detoxing your friends, family, if we can say that, but the people around you, um, but also the things you have, the environment you're in. You know, if things remind you of a, you know, if, if, some, if you're looking at a picture over there that reminds you of something bad and negative and a, and a bad time, I personally would possibly bin the picture, possibly, yeah. certainly stick it in a drawer. Uh, but but probably been it. But I'm I'm really keen to get your thoughts on on that because this this was uh, you know really influential and, and really helped me sort of get rid of the negativity. So I could actually focus on the positivity within myself, but um, absorb the positive energy uh, from the good people around. Yeah, it's, it's very important to create a positive work environment. So um, looking at these books here, for example, you have books that I've read that inspired me. Some are business books, some are personal development. They have loads of, uh, you can see it down there, you got loads of thank you cards, plus more thank you cards from clients saying, you've really helped me. I'm so grateful. That makes me feel fantastic. So when I walk into the room. And your own book there, I can see on the, on the middle shelf. Yeah, that's my book up there. And these are the thank you cards down here, which is fantastic. These are not just great books, but they're books written by friends of mine. So, uh, you know, you got Daniel Disney's book, you got uh, Steve Knapp's book, you got Mark Hunter's book, you got people, um, you know, Alex Goldfan, people I really respect and admire who've written books. That, that makes me feel really proud, the fact my friends are doing so well. Um, if you don't mind, I'm going to try and turn this around if I can. Absolutely. Ah, there we go. So that's my vision board. So that's the charity work I do. No, that makes me happy. I, I'm a sponsor for my local hospice. You know, Suzuki Santander and my company, Everybody Works in Sales. These are thank you letters from charities. These are my parents, my daughter. In the corner, you have uh, stubs from rock concerts. My, I work in an incredibly positive environment. You know, so, and that's really, really important because you got a positive mind. Mm. You just do better. And not just that, but I think it's very important to visualize success as well, Lee. So you mentioned earlier you like golf. 
Okay, so I'm, I'm sure you've heard of a, a golfer called Jack Nicholas. Yes, yeah, of course, you know, arguably the greatest. <laughs> yes, considered by many to be one of the greatest. I read a book, I think it's up here. No, one of my clients has it What They Don't Teach You at Harvard Business School. And in there, the guy used to represent Jack Nicholas. And he was worshiping him, saying what a great golfer he was. And he goes, Jack Nicholas, before he would be here, about to put, you know, excuse my lack of golfing technology, but I guess putting the ball into the hole, maybe. Um, yes. And what he would do beforehand is he would visualize the ball, he would visualize the success of the ball going into the hole before he did it. And very, very few people in sales or business visualize them having success before they pick up the phone. So I had, you know, prospecting calls before I spoke to you today and I had to speak to four people and with all four people, I visualized the success before I went in the call. It meant the call was incredibly positive. Now, of those four people, one said no to me, which was disappointing, but I was still so enthusiastic and so helpful and I still gave him resources he can use, even though he's not going to work with me anymore. He's left with a really positive feeling knowing, you know what, Neeraj, I didn't work with him, but God, he was such a nice guy. And he gave me all his resources. That's because I was in such a positive frame of mindset beforehand. So when you're positive, you can achieve so much more in life, not just in sales, but life in general. Fantastic. And actual fact, that book that you referred to is right there. <laughs> that's the one, Mark McCormick. Yes, that's the book. Oh, yes. So he actually right. talks about Jack Nicholas in there. Yeah. Indeed. Yeah. Um, Interesting, you know, uh, 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 several things I took, took took from it, but that that visualization of, of success, and I really like that um, that vision board of which I do have one also in that cupboard behind me. Uh, I need to update it because there's some of the stuff that I have actually achieved now that, that I did have a vision of that I wanted, uh, that I that I have achieved, and so it's not about showing off because nobody else sees it. You know, it's it's, it's a personal thing, um, but to give oneself some, some reassurance you know you're on the right track you're doing okay it's not that you're smashing it and you're rolling around in money it's not about that it's it's about um probably those days that w when it's most important those days where things aren't going so well and you can take look at you can look at these things and think okay it's okay i'm doing all right um, look, uh, draw on these positive experiences that, I, that I've had. You know, I remember, oh yeah, I had that client, similar sort of thing happen, but I turned that around. Whatever it may be, um, you know, that, that can sort of give you that lift, that, that boost. You know, if you sort of have a sterile environment with nothing around you, it's very uninspiring and difficult to sort of draw on, on, on experiences. So, fantastic. Um, any other books you want to share with anyone other than your own, of course? I would definitely 100% yeah. recommend my own. Well, it depends. If you're a business owner, the easy guide to sales for business owners is kind of obvious. You should be reading that. It's 125 pages. It's simple to read because business owners are so busy. If you want to read good books about mindset for sales, there's a book called A Mind for Sales by Mark Hunter, which is fantastic. Uh, Selling Boldly by Alex Goldfein, I read recently. That was outstanding. Uh, Converted by Matt Sykes. That is superb. He's got two books, Matt, Sales, Glue, and Averta, but I think Averta is a better one. Um, if you want to know more about LinkedIn and social selling, uh, The Million Pound LinkedIn Message by Daniel Disney. These are all books not only you should read, you should underline, make notes. If you listen to it on audio, just still make notes. Don't just read something. Take notes and then take action because that's absolutely vital. Don't just read something. Take notes and take action. Yeah, especially when you're consuming books uh, as you are, and in fact, all the successful people do. Uh, whether it be Bill Gates, Alan Sugar, I don't care who you are, you know they're they're reading many many books every year. You know, um, I you know it's it's quite scary to think, oh, I've got a book here, I don't want to put any marks in it, you know. Um, but that's what it's there for. Who else is going to use it? I mean, you're not going to pass it on to somebody else, right? So why not underline stuff? Um, I've got those um, sticky arrows that you can sort of quickly flick to and, and put them in on the page that you want. I'm not a fan of bending corners of, uh, of yeah. pages, but that's, that's personal preference. But um, because then when you've got that thing in your head, you know, I can't quite recall that, go grab the book and it will just be, because if you've got a 300 page book, you're not going to scan all 300 pages. But if you've 
um, uh, set yourself a little uh, marker in there uh, for for going back to that. That's uh, hugely beneficial. The other book that I want to share is this guy. Ah, okay. Quite, you know, I would say quite. It's not particularly old. Uh, it's not not new by any stretch. Um, I mean, look how thick that is. I mean, he goes on and on and on and on and on about his his background, yeah. uh, which is great because you know I think he's he's somebody who's in the in the spotlight quite quite a lot. Um, gets bashed a hell of a lot on social media on 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 Twitter for the stuff he says and hysterical arguments with Piers Piers Morgan for sure. But I wanted to understand how did this guy come from nothing? What mindset did he have? In order to get to where where he he is today, and uh, it, essentially he took on the big boys, right? I mean, he he started a computer company for for goodness sake, um, uh, and made the price like half the price or a third of the price of 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 the IBMs and everything that that were, that were out there at the time. So huge amounts of risk, but he decided, well, why not? Why can why can't it be me? If I don't do it, somebody else is going to do it. Because sure as eggs are eggs, there, aren't, there isn't going to be just one computer in, on the planet. Yeah. So why 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 not me? And uh, you know, so that that was um, quite, quite inspiring, and uh, it sort of sort of kick kickstarted me on when I wanted to make the change from being an employee into an entrepreneur, a business owner, because it's extremely scary when when you make that change as as you've experienced mm, it's terrifying absolutely terrifying yeah uh but uh there we are uh niraj thanks so much um very appreciative of your time uh best of luck with everything you're doing i'm confident this has been useful to to, to everybody uh take care my friend and uh yeah let's chat soon i really appreciate it. before we go to anybody watching the video or listening in audio please take notes on this there's a lot of good stuff we've discussed and please take action i promise you it will make a massive massive difference absolutely thanks naraj pleasure good to see you lee bye-bye cheers bud